What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video and hopefully it's gonna be a very informational one, right? Um, today we are gonna be talking about all about how to break down new lakes, especially this time of year in the fall, right? And it's probably one of the number one questions we get asked besides like, oh, is this fish on side imaging? How do you see fish on down imaging and sonar? Um, which we spend a lot of time showcasing. One thing I guess we don't spend quite as much time showcasing is showing maps of you know broader lakes and saying like, hey, this is a good spot, this is a good looking spot, this is a good looking spot, right? And that's kind of the step before a lot of the stuff you see in my videos, right? A lot of the stuff you see in my videos is like, all right, I already know this lake very well. I know there's a big point over here and I know the fish use it. Now here's what the fish look like on that point, right? Now, what we don't talk about is just that. It's, you know, here's a big lake, which you've never been to. Here's the four, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 spots that we're gonna look at when we start, right? And we're gonna key it in towards fall, definitely. And I get a ton of questions um, or a ton of people who, you know, they want to like send me a picture of their lake and be like, hey, where would you go to find walleyes? Um, which I appreciate and is cool. Um, I just honestly don't have enough time to go and do this for everybody, you know? Um, so hopefully this video is going to be a great learning tool for you guys. Um, if you're just getting into walleye fishing, it's probably going to be incredibly beneficial um, as far as, you know, how to look at a lake and uh, pick out some spots. Now we're going to be looking at lakes, which I have never been to, right? And this is totally unscripted, like everything we do. It's just totally, you know, we're gonna scroll over to a lake and uh, we're gonna pick out some sweet spots and kind of show you how I do that and what makes those spots good that time of year, right? So we're just kind of gonna, gonna kind of dive right into it, right? And like I said, we're gonna kind of key all this stuff into fall, right? So here's kind of the first lake, right? And uh, basically what we're looking at here, it looks like it's got some depth. It looks like it has a big shallow bay up here and then some deeper water here. And one thing in the fall, I always like to start by looking at areas that have the deeper water, right? And that is crucial to me. You know, if, it, if there's like a lake that has a split basin, right? Where like one basin is a lot of this like 50 foot stuff and the other basin's a lot of this like 15 foot stuff. I always like looking in that big basin, right? If, it, if this was early in the spring, this might be a different story. But in the fall, a lot of times you have a migration of fish that goes from the shallower basins like out to the deeper basins of the lake. And a lot of times that migration happens middle of summer and then into late summer. And then in the fall, those fish are very much staged up or round. They might be in shallow water, but they might be relating to that deeper basin area, right? So that's what we're gonna kind of start looking at here. And if we zoom in on the map a little bit, what you're gonna see is a lot of, it looks like most of the basin's like 70, 80 feet deep, right? Which is a pretty deep lake um, for probably most of us who are doing a lot of this inland walleye fishing, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, you can kind of see the depth. It looks like it, it's kind of a long skinny lake and it's kind of got depth that runs all the way through it, right? And uh, this, is like a, this is like a natural lake, right? This is like your natural lakes. It's probably clearer water and uh, you know, it's probably got weeds and it. it's not a river system is what I'm saying here. So um, looking at this, you know, where do you start? You got this big deep basin, right? Well, a lot of times on lakes like this where you have a basin that's in this, you know, 40 plus foot depth range, a lot of the depths I kind of like to look at are that 20 to 30 foot range, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our hummingbird highlight. Now, if you're not familiar with how to do this, I do it on a lot of these little shows we do. Um, but just hit menu, menu, make sure you're on hummingbird chart, and then you're going to scroll down to shallow water highlight. And that's kind of the first one I like to do. I'm just going to set that at about 10 feet, right? So we're just going to scroll over until this gets to 10. Now, what this is going to do is going to highlight everything in red that's 10 feet and less. So it's going to kind of give us a good idea where a lot of the shallow water is here. So scrolling around, you can see we got some of these bigger shallow arms like this, um, some shoreline flats that come out, things that look like this, right? Um, but kind of one of the primary patterns I like fishing in the fall, and probably most of us like fishing in the fall, is this deeper structure pattern, right? And it happens on pretty much most lakes. A lot of lakes might have a split where there's some fish very shallow and some fish very deep, but a lot of times that deep water one is the more stable, more consistent, more fish doing it type of pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, in this lake, I'm gonna start at that 20 to 30 foot range. I'm just gonna see what that gives us, right? As far as structure goes. So I'm gonna go menu, menu again. Now I'm gonna come down to my highlight minimum right here, right? And I'm gonna just turn this up to 20 feet. Next thing I'm gonna do is come down to the highlight maximum and I'm gonna turn this to 30 feet. Now it's gonna highlight everything from 20 to 30 feet in green, as I believe what we should have here. Yep, so now you can see this green starting to pop out at you, right? And uh, there's not a ton of green. And, and a lot of times what you see in a lake is like big humps out here in the middle surrounded by very deep water that top out at 30 feet, right? And that's like a real obvious deal, like boom, right there, there's where we should go. This lake doesn't seem to have 
much of that. It's a lot more shoreline oriented structure. Um, but this is kind of where we can really start picking this lake apart, right? So what main thing I'm looking for is stuff like this close to deep water. And a lot of these ones are. So if we like come into these over here, what we're going to see is this looks like it probably tops at about 20, but it's got this tail that runs out deeper, right? Now, I don't know if this is going to be rock or sand or, or who really knows what this is going to be, right? But these points right here where these things kind of come out to the middle of the lake, that's what I like for sure, right? It's definitely kind of an extension. You can see out here's the main part of this hump and it kind of tails out and flattens out out here towards this deeper water. That is definitely something that I am more interested in than just like a perfectly circular hump, right? And I have much more confidence in fish being right here than I do right here kind of in this flatter section of water. So that's definitely a spot we're checking out. Um, and the same thing kind of happens here, right? And you can see a lot of times what you have happen on humps that look like this. You know, if you have this very broad hump that's just like a perfect circle and it's like one depth ring here and then way inside that it's another depth ring, another depth ring. It's these very slow, gradual things, right? A lot of times that indicates to me that it's going to be like sand um, or something much less characteristic than something that has something that looks like this right here, right? Now what this is, if you spend enough time driving around lakes and looking at maps and you do it every single day for years, like I have for many, many times, um, what, you, what you notice about spots that look like this, where you have this little finger that runs off here a little bit, right? It's very subtle, but a lot of times that indicates it's going to have a little bit more character. It might be a gravel spine and a sand hump. It might be a, a, you know, a boulder line that runs right down the, t the, the, the top of that thing. And my guess is it probably, the, the key piece of structure on this probably runs something like this and then reaches about, looks like about 30 feet and just kind of fizzles out where it drops out, right? And if you like drop a waypoint right there so you guys can see it a little bit better, you know, that's probably like where I would assume the sweet spot is, right? So these are definitely kind of spots we want to drive around and look at. And, you know, whether there's a lot of character here or not, what you have is basically these, these fingers that run out into the basin right here. One's going to be right here, one's going to be right here. And then it kind of drops out to this real deep stuff, right? So those are definitely the kind of spots in which I like checking out in the fall. They're definitely in that, you know, they're, they're deeper than 25. They're probably a lot, a couple, these two spots are probably in that 25 to 30 foot range, which is just absolutely perfect, right? Now, let's see what else we can find on here. See what else is kind of popping out at us. There's not really a lot up here that kind of fits this description besides maybe like this right here, which is where we have another one of these little characteristics. You can see this is pretty much a straight break all the way down. And then right here, what we have is just a little knob that comes out. And that depth line is 22 feet. So you can see it's kind of all like 25, 26, 25, 26. And this is just this little 22 foot knob that comes out, right? And a lot of times fish like sitting on those like, you can imagine this breaks kind of all like this. And then right here you have this little high spot, right? And a lot of times that's the kind of spot where those fish like to sit just kind of overlooking the basin like that. It's just kind of that natural stopping point for fish at that depth they want to be at, right? And a lot of times those spots have a greater carry capacity, which is something I talk about a lot. You think about a break line that's all like this, right? And let's say those fish want to be at 23 feet. Well, they pretty much got to sit in this very small little window from here to here, right? Well, if you have a flat spot in that 23, 25 foot range, those fish can kind of get up on there and there can be a lot of fish kind of in this area, right? Because it's the depth they want to be at. So this is definitely a kind of a little area that jumps out at you too. We'll just kind of throw a waypoint down there. And uh, let's see what else we got. We're going to kind of keep scrolling around here, things that jump out at me. Now, do fish use straight breaks in the fall? Absolutely, right? But a lot of times it's not the first thing I look at. And a lot of times what I want to see is a very tight break that comes off a very big piece of structure. And uh, like I said, it's not a lot of times the first thing I'll look at. But we'll kind of keep cruising around here. Here's another point. Here's kind of one of those humps that tops out. It looks like it tops out a little bit shallower than what we're looking at right now. Tops out at 12. But it's got a very tight contour that, that drops out to the base and that could definitely be a spot worth looking at. But it's not jumping out at me right now. Let's see what else we got. Here's kind of a little bit deeper one for example. So if I scroll in on this a little bit what you're going to see is this tops out. It must top out at about 30, 33 feet, right? Which is kind of getting towards the deeper point in which I like to fish for fish. But if they're sitting a few feet up they're definitely in the zone. And what you have here is another one of these spots that's real subtle, right? It's kind of this, you know, it's all kind of like a 37, 35 foot flat. And then what you have here is definitely a hard spot, right? 
and you can see it there it's kind of that finger that comes up and it actually tops out a little bit at uh, probably 30 to 32 feet I would say but it's surrounded by 38 feet of water right and this is definitely another spot where you can look for fish and it's definitely going to be hard bottom here you know a lot of these lakes that are kind of set up like this what you might have happen is you might get out to like this 35 feet and it's just all real soft bottom right that just kind of gradually goes out to very deep water and spots like this are these sneaky little false spots that don't get a lot of pressure where a lot of times it's 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 a real hard bottom hump it might be gravel it might be sand it might be big rock but it's surrounded by deep soft bottom and these are absolutely killer sneaky little spots that not a lot of guys fish where there can definitely has a lot of potential this time of year and uh, into the late fall period so we'll drop a waypoint there and we'll kind of keep skirting around here see what else we got Here's kind of a real flat point. That doesn't look super interesting to me. Let's see what else we got here. This area looks interesting just because it's not like a lot of other stuff on the lake. And what we have, and that's another thing I always talk about, is kind of like, you know, look at the lake and what is very different than the rest of the lake. A lot of times those kind of areas have potential. It's kind of hard to put it into words exactly what that means, but basically what we have here it's kind of a bottleneck in the lake. It's not, it doesn't get real tight, or we're not talking about having current here. What you have here is a very big shallow flat and then a very tight break that runs off it, right? And from this, you know, seven feet of water out to 60, 84 feet of water is not a very long ways, right? That's only gonna be about 150 feet from that very shallow stuff to the very deep stuff. Anytime you got big structures that close to deep water always holds potential this time of year. And as far as like up in here, versus right here, I have a lot more potential um, or a lot more faith that fish are gonna be right there versus up on that inside real flat section this time of year, especially if they're related to deeper water, right? So we'll kind of throw a waypoint down there as something to look at. And a lot of times those breaks have a lot of potential, especially if they're connected to real big shallow flats. Now what we have down here, okay, this is definitely a little bit more interesting looking down here. Right here we have a 20 foot hump that butts up to very deep water again. And it's a real quick break coming off it. You know, I love these corners. You know, you look at this enough and you're like, hey, where are the fish gonna set up? I mean, they, we, we haven't been to this lake, I have no idea. So they might be set up here, they might be set up here, they might be set up on top. But I have a lot of confidence I and mean, anytime you have a point like this that loops into deep water that those fish love sitting right on the tip of it. It's not, doesn't really look like a point extension. Um, a point extension would be like, you know, if it ran out even farther and got real skinny and it ran out here into the real deep stuff, this is kind of a, a much more, you know, discreet type of deal here. But my guess is those fish are probably going to be sitting somewhere right here, right before it drops out real quick. So we'll kind of throw a waypoint down right there. And like I said, I have no idea if this is sand, if this is rock, what it really is, but it's close to deep water. It's in that depth range. Definitely something we want to look at, right? And kind of going down a little bit farther, kind of this one whole side of the lake kind of looks to just be a straight break like you can see here. Not really a lot going on. Um, so over here you got this long shallow extension that runs out close to deep water. That also is probably going to hold potential. We'll throw that down there. And uh, yeah, then it just kind of shallows out here towards the other end. But if we kind of zoom out on this lake right now, and we'll kind of see what it looks like. What we have now is... We have six waypoints down, one, two, three, four, five, six. And basically what we have highlighted is any extension that goes out into the middle of the lake like that, that fits that 20 to 30 foot depth range. So as far as looking for deep water fish, I'm very confident that if you come to this lake, those are gonna be fish and fish are relating to deep water that they're probably gonna be fish in a couple or all of those six spots, right? Now we haven't gone there and driven around and looked for them yet, but that would be the next step to do obviously, right? Drive around, see what you're working with as far as those spots if they're rock. You know, maybe three of those spots are sand and don't have fish and the other three of them are, are rock that go into deep water and those are definitely spots that have a lot more opportunity and possibility to hold fish versus just those straight sand ones. But we don't know without driving around. This is kind of that preliminary step where we're just looking at the map, right? So kind of going forward from here, what's the other bite that I fish a lot in the fall? And it definitely happens more post turnover for me than it does pre turnover for right now. And we're on the verge of turnover up here in Northern Wisconsin. We got water temps that are like 60 degrees, which is crazy for this second week of September right now. But the other bite that's gonna happen a lot is fish that are relating to weeds this time of year, right? And a lot of times, you know, I don't know if the weed edge in this lake is at eight feet, if it's at 18 feet, I don't really know that. But what we can do for sure is look at a lot of these spots and probably pick where there's a high likelihood for there to be weeds, right? And one of the keys to fishing weeds for me late in the year is somewhere close to deep water and very big spots, right? 
Can little spots um, in weeds hold fish? Absolutely. But I have a lot more confidence going to a new lake, getting on the biggest piece of structure. That's one thing I always stress. Um, it has way more opportunity to hold fish than the, I feel like a lot of us go out and we try to look for the little middle of nowhere secret spot, right? That's like the size of the boat that nobody's ever found, right? Well, obviously that spot can hold fish if you find it, but do you wanna drive around all day to try to find it? Maybe not, right? A lot of times the best way to do it is to look at these very big spots and try to find fish on those big spots because there's always more fish on the big spots than there is on the tiny little spots, right? So how do you find weeds, right? So we have our shallow water highlight right now set to 10. And uh, I might dial that back a little bit. Actually, I'll probably leave it there. But I'm going to set my mid-depth highlight from probably 10 feet to probably like 15 feet, right? And that's a pretty safe bet that either that weed edge might end at 10 or it might end at, you know, 15 feet. So we're going to kind of see what is in that depth zone. So I'm going to go ahead, go back to my highlight here. And my minimum, like I said, is going to be 10. My maximum is going to be 15 here. So now we're going to lose sight of all those deeper humps, which is fine. All right, so now what we're gonna see here, let's kind of scroll into some stuff. What we're gonna see here is a lot of very straight break, right? Now, a lot of times these straight breaks, they don't have a lot of capacity for weeds to be there, right? Like, does this point um, look interesting because it goes out to very deep water? Yes, but th where those weeds would be is about that thin, right? Not a very big area. So we wanna look for more stuff that looks kind of like this right here, right? And that's kind of a start, these little bit flatter areas, but I want to find something that's a little bit bigger than that because I got a lot more confidence in something like that. And this big shallow stretch here is definitely something, we already dropped a waypoint on here for our deep water looking for fish, but it's also it has great potential for shallow fish, right? And one thing that you see a lot, anywhere it's real flat like this coming out, has a very solid potential for holding or for having weeds on it, right? Weeds don't like to grow on this kind of stuff because a lot of times the bottom's just too hard. But a lot of times you have these bigger flat sections that are close to deep water, very high likelihood of having weeds here. So I'm gonna drop a waypoint right here on the tip of this point. And I'd probably look all the way like back into here. And I might look all the way out into here, even though this is gonna be a pretty thin band of weeds if it's here. But you can see how close it is to deep water and you can see how big of a spot this really is. Um, if you kind of look at the lake here, if I can get it to zoom out real quick. That's a big shallow section of water out in the main lake, right? Definitely a spot worth checking for weeds. And whenever you're looking for weeds, side imaging is key for finding weeds and side imaging is key for finding fish in those weeds and around those weeds, right? So we'll kind of keep scrolling, see if we can find some more stuff like this. We'll see what this looks interesting here. We'll go ahead and drop a waypoint on this. So what we have here is the shallow kind of hump here. It looks like it probably tops at about seven feet. And then we have an extension that runs off it. Now, the way this extension set up, it kind of table tops out here at like 11 feet. It looks like 12 feet and then kind of tails out. Um, this might, this kind of looks to me like it might be a harder bottom spot. It might be rock. Um, but if there is weeds on top of this, that kind of stretches out onto this finger. Definitely a good looking area right here. Something worth, worth checking out in that shallower depth range. And you can kind of see it's kind of a, a large kind of area here, but the most character for me and the most possibility for fish looks to me to be right here on this extension. And if there's weeds or milfoil or cabbage that kind of runs out here into this 10, 12 foot range, that's a real good looking point. All right, sorry about that. I had a little camera glitch there with the big camera, but um, kind of, yeah, wrapping up the shallow spot, this is definitely the kind of shallow character in which we're gonna be looking for. It's close to deep water, big extension, tops out very shallow, Good possibility having weeds or some kind of good cover there. Now, kind of scrolling up the lake here, one spot that definitely jumps out is kind of the entrance to this very large shallow bay, right? And what happens a lot of times is you have a lot of life that sucks way up shallow um, when the water gets cold. And especially, you know, a lot of times, like I always say, there's a split bite, there's deep fish, and then there's very shallow fish in the fall. And a lot of times these shallow bays will just be a ton of like small minnow life this time of year. And uh, this is definitely the kind of spot we're looking for. Now, one thing, it, it's very obvious that this is very shallow, right? It's like three feet, kind of all the way across this big thing. And then there's just like a little funnel right here where it kind of comes out, right? And it's a little bit deeper right through this funnel. And this is definitely the kind of spot that looks good. And it kind of butts up to this bigger flat corner over here. And I guarantee you that there's probably weeds growing throughout this corner right here, right? And this is another kind of obvious spot that looks good to us. So 
we're definitely going to waypoint that and a lot of times um, it takes just a real quick pass with side imaging over this to see how far out that weed edge goes and if there's life in those weed edge and a lot of times you're looking for a screenshot looks something like this walleyes in the weeds you can see them right there something obvious like that and side imaging is definitely king for looking at stuff like this now kind of moving farther around the lake here we'll see what else we got we already marked that out that one north shore is just kind of a big steep break that big shallow flat right there. And here's kind of another big, now this is another one of these like big shallow looking base thing, but that whole break is just so tight. I don't know, I don't have a lot of confidence in that, but something like this right here, I have a little bit more confidence in where the top of this thing is like five, but it's got fingers like this that run out, a little bit more character versus just that long straight break. It kind of funnels in back around here, but I'm more interested in like this section right here, right? This is kind of the outside of this thing. It looks like it's kind of between seven feet and 10 feet. It's a little bit more flat, so a great potential for weeds. And you got flat corners like this and close to deep water, right? We're in 50 feet out here. So we're gonna throw a waypoint down probably right here and probably right here on this same piece of structure. And we also have a little finger that runs out right here, right? Now this is a little bit deeper. This is between 15 and 17 feet. But you can see again, it's very close to deep water. So this whole kind of complex here uh, it's got a little bit to offer for sure. It's got the shallower stuff and it's got this deeper finger that runs off it, right? So definitely a spot we're checking out there for shallow weeds. And yeah, I think that's kind of where the shallow water stuff is. Here's kind of another one of these which we waypointed um, for a deep water spot. But it's another one of these same kind of deals, right? The spots that are jumping out to me here is like this corner and this inside corner and then like this over here, right? This little bit flatter section. So you can see real quick by changing your highlights, a lot of these different spots start popping out at you. And if we scroll out right now, we went from having six spots to look at to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So now we got 17 waypoints down on this lake, which is gonna be more than enough stuff for us to check out throughout the course of a day to at least give us a start to find fish, right? Now, a lot of these spots are like the predominant structures in the lake, you know, big spots that have both shallow and deep water um, availability as far as where fish can be. So just looking at a lake like this from afar, these are the spots that I pick out as like, hey, you know, this is where I wanna start looking for fish. These spots likely have the most potential for me and then go from there, right? Maybe you strike out on 10 of those spots, but you got two good shallow spots and four good deep spots, you know, and then, then there's your day. And uh, you know, this is just kind of a nice overview of how I look for you know, quality spots on lakes like this, these deeper natural lakes. All right, so that was kind of your deep, clear natural lake, right? Now the next thing we're gonna look at is more of a rivery system, more of like a flowage system, something with an inlet, it probably has an outlet as well, um, and more of these flowage systems, which kind of are riddled all across the Northwoods, um, and I guess all over the Midwest, right? Kind of your bigger reservoirs, right? And I've never been to this one. Um, I've fished a few of these reservoir systems, and they definitely do fish different, but a lot of the same principles always apply. And one big thing, obviously, that a reservoir has is like I said, water coming into it and probably water going out of it, right? So we're gonna kind of do the same thing. Now, one of the big difference is shallow water generally means something a lot different and deep water generally means something a lot different on these river systems, right? Because a lot of times they don't get quite as deep and a lot of times they are more stained up systems, right? Meaning you have a shallower weed edge, you have less light getting down um, in shallower water. And uh, because of that, fish can naturally slide a lot shallower, right? Like catching walleyes in four feet of water in a lot of our gin clear lakes doesn't happen a whole lot, right? Um, on these flowage systems, it definitely does. So one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tweak our shallow water highlight a little bit. We'll probably set that like seven or eight feet, right? So I'm gonna go menu, menu, and I'm gonna come down to shallow water highlight again. I'm gonna crank this up. We'll just call it eight feet, right? I don't want it quite all the way out to 10 because probably because the weed edge in this lake is somewhere like five to eight feet, right? So that, that eight foot shallow water highlight should give us a good bearing on where some of these shallower flats are that probably have weeds, right? Now, if we kind of look around, there's obviously a lot of shallow water on these, these types of systems. There almost always is, big shallow bay here, um, a lot of red through here, and just a lot of this main lake. You know, these lakes are definitely a lake, where a lot of these flows, it's like hard to find a place to start, right? Because there's so much stuff going on everywhere, right? Now, one thing that happens a lot of times is life happens around river channels, right? Especially late in the fall, right? A lot of these river channel oriented spots is where a lot of this life goes. And you might be fishing shallow, but a lot of your depth in these flowage reservoir systems happens around river channels. So that's kind of what we're gonna start out looking at. Now, a good way to find the river channel is anywhere where you see this kind of thing snaking through right here. 
So we're going to kind of scroll over to it, zoom in, kind of see what the average depth of that channel is. And it kind of looks like 28, 24, 25, 23. So if I kind of set this highlight to show me that river channel, what we're probably going to get probably somewhere 23 to 28 feet or maybe 23 feet plus, right? So, all right, so we're going to come down here to our minimum. We're going to set this at, let's say 23 feet of water for our minimum highlight for showing us this channel and our maximum, we're just going to crank this up to like, we'll just crank it up to 33 in case there is some real deep stuff. Now, right away, what jumps out is this real obvious river channel, right? You can see how it snakes through here. Um, pretty obvious. And I, if I zoom out a little bit farther, what you're going to see is exactly how this thing kind of tails through the whole lake, right? And you can kind of follow it just by doing something that looks like this, right? It gets real skinny up here and it kind of fizzles out. Well, it keeps going up through here, right? And you can see it kind of goes here. You catch up to it right here on these corners and then it kind of goes up a little bit farther here. And we're kind of losing it here, I think, because the lake's getting a little bit shallower but it's real easy to follow this thing, right? And that's kind of the point I wanted to make. So the next thing as far as finding shallow water fish in the fall goes, now one thing, super fun bite, which I've done a lot on a lot of these flowage systems, is pitching very shallow in the fall, right? Into a lot of this, a lot of times it's wood, because a lot of these flowage systems are riddled with stumps and logs and a lot of wood in the water um, on big shallow water structure that goes close to that river channel. And uh, sometimes it's weeds too, so your last kind of remaining weeds that are up shallow late in the fall, right? So one thing we can kind of do here is follow this river channel down. And what we're looking for is kind of a real complex area here. It's somewhere like this, right? Where we have, here what we have is a real tight bend in this channel. And you can see it right here, it kind of comes up and goes just like this right here. And we have multiple shallow water points and humps surrounding it, right? So this is definitely an area. And anytime you have a big bend in the river channel, always a good thing, right? because yeah, it's just complexity it's just one more thing going on in that spot right so like we could probably drop waypoints as far as checking shallow water right there we could probably check it right there we could probably check it on this shallow knob right here and probably you know right here and then you kind of got one more little deal going on over here right and you can see kind of how plex complex this whole area is the tight bend point 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 hump out here right and then another little island over here, right? So a lot of complexity going on in this area and a lot of shallow water. And that, like I said, that river channel is kind of the lifeblood that feeds a lot of these reservoir systems. And this is the exact kind of spot where we're looking for, for shallow water. Now it could be five points like this, which has a lot of complexity, or it could be one really big shallow flat on one of these spots, right? But an area like this, I guarantee has potential, you know, whether those fish are down in the channel or up on those shallow flats, definitely something to check out, right? So you can kind of see what we have going on here. Um, and this is definitely a spot we're checking out. Now, if we kind of keep scrolling down and all I'm going to do is just keep following this channel and looking for lots of red close to that channel, right? Here's another area right here. So what we have here is a big skinny point that runs out and breaks out real quick to this channel, right? So this is definitely another one, right? Lots of red. It looks like it's all five, six feet up on top and then 25 feet right off the tip and a super steep break right here, right? You can see how quick that probably falls out to deep water. Gives real easy access for those fish when they want to pop up on top of that stuff. And if there's weeds or good rock or wood up there, a lot of times that's going to be a good area to check out. And let's see, we'll kind of mark up another one to give you guys kind of an idea of what I'm looking for here. Let's see, we'll keep following this channel. Here's kind of a big point here. It's not quite as shallow and this kind of wraps around. It almost looks more like a hump from what it is here. Um, this might be a spot. This is in like nine feet, but kind of another similar deal. We'll drop a waypoint there. Tight bend in the channel here. Kind of a big point right here. This would be another one. Um, pretty decent sized point. It looks like it's about four or five feet, six feet, and kind of falls out to eight feet right here. But nice and flat, probably an area that has some kind of structure on it because it's that close to the channel. And another thing, that channel is real close right there. You can see how quick that swings in, right? So it's real quick to just kind of go around, set that shallow water highlight to like that eight feet, nine feet, or even a little bit shallower if you want. Set that highlight, your mid-depth highlight to where that river channel is and start looking at those real complex or large shallow areas that butt right up to that river channel. And obviously whenever we're talking about a, a river system or these reservoirs or flowages, another thing that's obviously super crucial is inflows and outflows, right? A lot of times wherever water is coming in, current is happening obviously, and it's almost like a migration of bait and fish late in the fall to these areas, right? And this happens everywhere where you have a river system pretty much. 
or one of these big reservoir areas. So we're gonna try to follow this channel. A lot of times these things come in on the north end. I've never been to this lake, so I have no idea, but I'm just gonna start following this channel. And it kind of snakes all over the place. You can see it kind of running way over here now. Kind of runs up here. And all right, this is starting to look more river-esque here. And just as we thought, there's kind of a, a, a long arm that runs off this, which is definitely more rivery. And if we kind of zoom in on the map here, and this is like the, the Lake Master Plus card, so you can see a little bit of what's going on, even on land, because I kind of map it out. But here we have a river that comes in. You can even see there's like rapids right here. And I'm pretty confident this is probably the inflow of this lake. I'm not sure if there's a dam right here or not, but it's probably the inflow of this lake, right? And you can see it's kind of skinnier, probably more rivery looking up here, probably lots of rock. And uh, this is definitely an area which is always worth checking out in the fall, um, kind of anywhere where, like I said, you have current coming in. And if that is where the inflow is, there's probably more current up here than there is in the rest of the lake. You can see how tight it is. And like I said, it's probably a lot more rivery. And a lot of times fish will just sit like around anything like this point up here, right? They might sit in this channel bend right here or where it butts up real close to this island like right here, right? And sometimes if you go a little bit farther out, kind of when it starts turning into like more of a lake, what you'll have is like bigger structure close to this channel, right? So here's kind of another complex area. You have like a island complex here, island on this side, Skinny Island Point Complex on this side, this river channel is right next to, plus that big river bend. This is gonna be another spot that's definitely worth checking out. Now in these kind of spots, they might be down here, they might be up on top. It's hard to say, but it's not a huge piece of water up here. It's pretty thin. This looks like it's about 400 feet across, right? And this is definitely kind of the thing we're looking for. And this hump actually has river channel on both sides because it comes up and swings around. Definitely another area to check out, right? We'll kind of throw that waypoint down. So anytime where you have current coming into a lake, definitely worth checking out, right? And the same thing kind of applies. We got cars and trucks driving by, but um, big structure, current related, where that river comes in and that channel gets real tight and comes around it, right? A lot of times those fish, a large big migration, like I talked about, to these areas that have a lot of current this time of year. So we'll go ahead and scroll out. And there's kind of one other pattern, a lot of this deep hump pattern that you can fish to. Now, it looks like once you kind of get out here to the main lake, it kind of seems like your deep water is kind of like I said, in that 23 to 28 foot range, which is your channel. So we might be able to highlight stuff that's like, uh, we might be able to highlight stuff that's like 20 to like 13 feet and see what that gives us. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna look for life that's close to, or spots that are in that depth range, humps or points that are close to that river channel. So what did I say? We're gonna do, we're gonna do 20 feet to 13 feet. I did this backwards though, so we gotta go 20 feet here and 13 feet here. Now what might happen is the whole map might like fill in green, and then we know we did something wrong. So that is kind of what happened here for the most part. So um, we'll kind of see. So now our river channel is not gonna be highlighted, but we have highlighted is a lot of structure. So I might have to dial this back a little bit. And you can see there's a lot of flat water like in that 15 to 20 foot range, which I'm not really interested in. Like something like this, an area like this in here, does not interest me, right? You can see it's just a lot of flat water and not a lot going on there. Um, so we might dial this back just a little bit more. We might go like 20 or we might go like 17 to 13, see what that does here. All right, that's looking a little bit better now. So now if we just zoom in on some of this stuff like right here, now what we have here, let's see what we're looking at. Now we have a 17 foot flat that comes right out to this river channel, right? And one kind of spot that jumps out at you is right out here on the tip of this thing. You can see how tight that channel gets close to deep water and that channel really funnels down tight. Anywhere where you have a channel that, you know, kind of goes from a very large main lake channel and kind of funnels down between to get between like two humps or something like that, definitely another spot. So something like this here, and I'll kind of back out a little bit more here. I have to zoom out one more time and you can kind of see how this flat runs right it's kind of 17 feet all over and it, the river channel wraps right around it right definitely an area that i am interested in and probably has something going on there right let's see if we can do it again here so we're just going to keep following this river channel you can see the channel gets a little bit wider and a little bit flatter like out in this section here here's another one of these points with a high spot right here 
and you can see here's like a deeper hump and this little point extension that runs out to this 20 foot stuff. This is the kind of stuff we're looking for for fish in deep water this time of year, right? These fish can also be in the channel, but if you're gonna be fishing structure, looking at structure close to that river channel, um, a lot of times, you know, it's kind of setting that highlight just shy of where that river channel, that depth, that depth of that river channel is, shows you a lot of these kind of spots like this, right? And this is kind of the two things I used to do when I used to fish flowages a lot. We'll kind of keep coming down here. We'll look for another one. See if we can get some kind of big piece of structure just as another example. Not a lot going on in here, real flat, right? River Channel kind of does a sideways hook right there. And you kind of get in here, and this is enough, This is definitely kind of what we're looking for, right? A little bit deeper off the shallow, you can see like big shallow flat right here. And then these deeper humps out here, and especially like right here, and uh, a little bit farther down here. We might have to hit zoom in again. So you can see the channels right here, and the top of this humps right here, and real quick break off the top of this stuff. And I dropped this waypoint in like 12, 13 feet, right as it comes off this hump and drops down. If there's good wood up here, good gravel, definitely a spot we're checking out. We'll kind of come a little bit farther this way here. Here's another little point right here, kind of a unique spot right next to the channel. And then you kind of come down here where this river channel does another little hook. And uh, you can see right here what we have is this other corner of this hump that's right up to the river channel. So real quick, that's kind of how I like to break down these reservoir systems. Um, you know, number one, I like, I like to look for, especially if it's real late in the fall, I like to look for these big shallow flats close to deep water, close to that river channel. And you kind of saw I'm looking for complexity or big spots. And number two, anywhere there's an inflow and outflow into that lake, um, especially your inflows where you have current coming in, a lot of times that draws a lot of life in the fall. And you might be looking for structure right there, or you might just be looking for fish in that deep river channel. And then once I get out into the main lake, I look to look for that deeper structure close to the channel, right? Which might be 10 to 15 feet in your lake. It might be 20 to 30 feet in your lake, depending how deep that channel is, right? So like I always say, depth's relative to how deep your lake gets, right? deep might mean you know 30 feet on one lake and it might be 12 feet on another lake so kind of keep those things in mind but this is just kind of a quick little exercise on basically how i look at a map and break it down um, i love fishing new water and i spend a lot of time on new water fishing new water and these are kind of things over the years i've kind of picked up and basically the spots where i look for just quickly when i get to a new lake so hopefully this is beneficial for you guys let me know you guys if you guys like this video um, i wasn't really sure what to film this morning but i'm about to load up the boat and go fish some new water myself and uh, hopefully get a video done there. But um, we're gonna announce the winner for a, uh, uh, what did we give away? A Pissy Fun Carbon X 2000, my favorite walleye re reel in the next video we do. Um, so stay tuned for that. But thanks for watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe and we'll see you guys next time.